I know it's been a little while since I recorded a video. Sorry about that. I do have my reasons. How I will, um, I'll talk about those in either a separate video or in a community post or something. I don't want to saturate this video. But I am back now and I'm going to be doing probably a video a week going forwards. Again, I'll have more details about that in the, uh, in the little update I'll do. But today we are looking into Python's magic methods. So these are kind of special uh, little methods. They, are, uh, they can actually be called special methods. They can also be called dunder methods. And these have various purposes within a class. So they can be, you know, a constructor. They can you know, control how the class is represented. They can control operator overloads, for example. So yeah, these things are very useful and there are a lot of them. In this video, I'm not going to go over all of them. I am going to go over a, a decent chunk of them. It helps that a lot of them are quite closely related. So I can actually go over quite a lot of them without having to talk about a great deal of them. Um, so this video won't be too long. Uh, but there are plenty more for you to kind of scavenge around if you want to find out. But these are, you know, if you're, especially if you're new to object-oriented programming or if you're just looking to get, you know, a little bit better with classes and looking to, you know, answer some questions about how to represent certain things or how to do certain operations, uh, then I'm here to show you that. And I'm just going to add one to my notes because I just remembered there's one I particularly want to talk about. So we'll start by creating a class and we're going to do kind of my, you know, my uh, go to. And we're going to create a human class and this class is going to have the name, the age and the jobs. Uh, and we're going to set that as none by default. Of the person and then we're going to have self dot name. So equals name <laughs> that would help if I actually did that properly self.age equals age self.jobs equals jobs nice simple thing this one uses the init uh, special or magic method whatever you want to call it and this is probably the one that you would have seen the most because if you've created any class uh, in Python, then you probably would have used this. This is the main constructor. This initializes the class, hence why it's called init. Um, and you don't have to provide it, though generally speaking, at about 90% of instances, you probably will want to do something with it. Unless you're using like data classes or atras or something, then you don't have to worry about it. But um, I'm not going to spend too long talking about that. But I do want to talk about one called def in it uh, subclass. I'm not going to go into huge details about this, um, but I do. Yeah, I did want to bring it up. Uh, we can get rid of the type ins. We don't need to complicate matters. And if we just say, you know, meme equals none here, uh, and I'll show you how this works. So if we just set a class attribute here, and then to say we had a subclass called like test or something. And inherited from human. And we don't have to do any of that, but uh, when we initialize a subclass, this actually gets called. And this kind of you know, takes over the role of meta classes in some respect. I'm not going to talk about meta classes today. Um, but this, uh, this class is, you know, the test class. And in the meme here, what we can actually do is we can pass it in here. So, say if we do like Rickroll, for example. I'm not going to bother with this class attributes actually. I feel as though it's just going to complicate things. But we can print meme. And then if we run that, whoops, I've got one called magic plan, which is why that worked. We get Rickroll. So essentially what's going on is we're creating this, we're inheriting from human. This in its some class is being run. It's taking this, which is an instance, not an instance, it's the class of test. And then anything we pass in here as you know arguments or keyword arguments, then get past this in its subclass. So this is useful if you want to like register subclasses within the class or that's to be honest that's the only use case I can think of. I did look this up. I haven't really found a use for this ever um, but you know there may be some people that do have a use for this sort of thing so I thought I'd bring it up while I was talking about the magic methods. I'm not going to talk about it in any more detail than that. This might be a separate video on its own but I thought I'd mention it, considering I thought it was cool. So, we're going to move on to kind of representing classes in different ways. Um, so, you know, how to represent it as a string is a particularly common one. You can use this, def string, and then we can say return self.name. So now, if we were to, you know, print um, 
our human object. Say if we, you know, create one for me. I'm my name's Ethan. I'm 24 years old. Then when we print the actual class itself, then we print what's in self dot name. If we didn't do that, then we'd end up with this here. So this provides a human readable um, way of you know using it in a string. If you want a more detailed version of that, you can also do wrapper. And this is like the string representation of the class. So in here, you'd potentially want to do something like, you know, human. This is kind of the data class format. Um, so you could do yourself.name and then age, you know, because self.age, I'm not going to bother putting jobs in there. But now, if you print that, it still does the string representation by default. If string isn't defined, it will do the wrapper by default. You can also use wrapper here, and then it would print the string represent or the detailed string representation, I guess you call it. And this is really useful for like debugging and stuff like that. Um, you know, it allows you to see, you know, kind of that you're manipulating the right thing. And one particularly common trait with these Dunder methods is that they tend to define. Uh, what happens when the object is called in certain circumstances. So for example, the wrapper function, the dunder wrapper is called. If you were to do like an int, for example, then you would use def uh, dunder int, not to be confused with dunder init. They are you know, very similar. In this case, we can do self to age. And now it would print 24 to the console. Um, you can also have float, which returns a float number. And you can also have hash, uh, I'll just do hash real quick, where you, you essentially just do like a, your own custom hash. I don't remember. I think if you don't define this, it will just do it. Maybe let's let's find out. Let's find out live. I didn't test this before. There we go. It automatically does one for you. So you don't need to define it, but you can define your own one if you want. So you know, if you want, say, two classes with the same name to have the same hash, and you can do that, or you can provide a hash that was a tuple of all of them. I think that might be what it does by default. Um, but it's worth noting nonetheless. So with representations out of the way, that's probably not all of them. You know, there's there's complex and stuff as well. But you know, I'm just skimming over the ones that are potentially more useful. Um, you know, you can always look up if you have any more queries. But I'm going to move on to operator overloads now. So I'm only really going to talk about one of these in detail because a lot of them work kind of the same. Um, so I'll leave all the rest there. So if you want to override what happens when you add two classes together, for example, you can use the Dunder add. So this would be, you know, say if you wanted to do, um, well, say you had me, uh, which is a human, the name Ethan, and I'm 24. And then you had Barney the dinosaur. I don't know. I don't actually know how long Barney the, uh, the dinosaur has been on TV, but let's say 50 years. I don't know if that's right. That's probably a bit much. Um, and then we wanted to do, you know, add the two together uh, like this. So we uh, so we want to like control what happens when we use the plus operator. What we can do is we can have this self and this other is kind of the other class. So the self is this end or this side and the other is the right hand side. So Ethan would be self and Barney would be other in this instance. And then we can, you know, do something like return self dot age plus other dot age. And if we did that, then we get 74 because 24 plus 50 is 74. One thing to keep in mind is that you might not want to, you know, do this um, if the two objects are of different types. So say for example, you know, Ethan was a human and then Barney, you know, we created another dinosaur class and then maybe didn't have age and then it would error and we didn't, you know, want to deal with that. What we can do is we can actually do the check and if you work with my pipe, I'll actually tell you to do this. You could do um, if not is instance uh, other and then we can do self.class. Whoops, I don't know how that happened. What we could do is we can return not implemented. Uh, and it's important that we don't raise not implemented error here uh, because some of these Dunder methods, and this is only a thing you do in Dunder methods, uh, some of these Dunder methods kind of have alternative implementations that they then do if not implemented is returned. Others, I think this one, it would just raise an error immediately. 
but in other methods it's recommended that you do this. But essentially what this does, uh, if the you know the other, if the right hand side operation is not the class you expect it to be, uh, then you can return this and then Python will handle it uh, from there. So I think maybe in one of the list based ones or like the sort perhaps it does something with it. I'm not really sure, I haven't looked too much into that. So on top of add, you also have sub for subtraction, mol for multiplication, floor div and true div. Uh, so floor div is if you were to do, say, um, with a double slash and true div is a single slash. Uh, you then have mod, which is the modulo operator like that. And then you have PAL, which is the double asterisk operator like that. And you can override all of these. Uh, I'm not going to go over every single one because the things would be largely the same. You know, the uh, the only thing that would change in the subtraction one is I'd do that. You know, um, so yeah, these would be something that you implement on your own. So on top of all these operators, you also have additional operators that can be used with plus equals. So say, for example, we want to do Ethan plus equals Barney and then print Ethan. The add... Um, uh, Dunder method wouldn't be sufficient for that. We would need to do the def i add, and then that takes self and other. And this is largely the same. You know, you'd have uh, these same things. Instead of doing this, you would do self dot age plus equals other dot age, and then you would actually return self. Uh, so it's a little different. But now, if you run that, then we actually print the correct thing or at least something that's useful, we can see that, you know, the age of me, I've suddenly gotten 50 years older while recording this video. Um, so yeah, this, I, you know, you have your I add, I sub, I mol, I floor div, I true div, I mod, I power, you have them for all of them. And you know, as I say, the operation is going to be largely the same. You just need to make sure that you return self, uh, because, you know, obviously what you return out of here is what's going to be set, is what Ethan is going to be set to. Um, so do keep that in mind. Next, I'm going to talk about comparison operators. Uh, so, you know, if you do something like this or something like this, uh, we can also put that uh, back in a print statement now. Uh, so with an equals, for example, you would want to do a def eq self other, and you would have this same thing, this check here, but one thing you could do instead if you wanted to is just return false. Because if the two instances aren't of the same class, then of course they're not going to be equal. So you don't really need to return not implemented. I believe you can, and it would return false anyway, but don't quote me on that. I tend to just return false directly out of this. Um, and then, you know, in our case, we could do, you know, self.name equals other.name. If you wanted to, you know, include the age as well. So if you wanted to make sure that the class, the equal people had the same name and the same age that you could do that. Um, or if you, you could do the jobs if you want. In this case, you know, if you know, two people have the same name, then they're the same person because that's how it works in the real world, I think, as we all know. Um, you do also have uh, def any as well, um, which is, you know, your... Uh, not equals, so that kind of works the same. You can basically just program that as return not self.eq if you want, like that, and that'll work just fine. You also have um, le as well, which is less than or equal to lt, which is just less than, ge, which is greater than or equal to, and gt, which is greater than. If I just kind of show one of them off, so say LT, uh, again, don't want to be here for absolutely ever. We could do self.age is less than other.age. So in our case, a less than, it'd be the left-hand operation is less than the right-hand operation. So do keep that in mind. So if we just print that, we can see that, you know, I am younger than Barney, therefore you know, the LT is true. If I do this, our names are not the same, so the check comes out as false. If you weren't to do any of these operations, so if you weren't to do any of these comparison operators, or if you weren't to do any of the operator overloads, a lot of these things uh, don't have inbuilt ones. So the string and the repper do have inbuilt ones, uh, for example, but you know, operator overloads um, and EQs and stuff don't, unless you're like inheriting from another class or something. To so say if you're you know inheriting from the int-based class, then it would have 
you know, add, I add, EQ probably it would have as well, all this stuff. But on their own, like a class on their own doesn't have a lot, all of this. So if you do need it, then you do need to add it yourself. Of course, you don't need to add all of them. Uh, but that's just something to keep in mind for those. So while we're on the topic of operators, I want to talk to you about something I actually learned the other day, which kind of gave me the inspiration to do this video in the first place. And that was def contains. Uh, so we're going to do self and then key. Well, I suppose it'd be value, maybe. It would be a bit better. Um, so this is if we were to say, you know, if to do, you know, Ethan in like a list of some description, it would then call this. Sorry, this is actually wrong. It would be if, um, say, you know, programmer in Ethan, for example. So if my jobs, if I set my jobs real quick uh, to programmer, then if I did, you know, return value in self.jobs, then if, you know, programmer is in Ethan.jobs, which it is, it will return once I get it right, true. See, that's something I learned really recently when I was doing some, like, a, a class that handled version constraints. Um, and that's a really nice little shortcut for something like that, you know, if it's like a, a dictionary subclass or a list subclass or anything like that. Now, this video is getting a little bit long, but there are there is one more thing that I want to talk about, and that is the def get item, and to a slightly lesser extent, get atra. But we'll talk about that. Uh, so, so, so this is actually kind of works uh, sort of the same way. So if I were to do this in this example, looking at the jobs and then key, what I could do is I could do, say, print Ethan and then, you know, a slice it like a list. And then it would be P. Interesting. Oh, yeah, because this is actually supposed to be a list, isn't it? That was kind of how that was designed to be. There we go. So now I don't have to, you know, supply ethan.jobs. What this is doing is it's calling get item. The zero is going in here. So this works on lists and dicks. So if jobs was a dictionary, for example, I could do, you know, programmer here and, you know, a programmer could have a value. As soon as we're doing a list, it would be a number. Um, and then it would go in here. It would then, you know, index the self.jobs and then it returns that out. This is how NumPy does its fancy syntax with its commas and commas with its... Well, yeah, it does have commas in it, actually, and its colons and all that. I was, I was going for columns and rows, but it means the same thing, I suppose. So, yeah, there's also, you know, uh, getatra, which is only really useful if you have, like, um, a config thing or, like, a dictionary. So one example of this, this is kind of something I did in the real world. Let me zoom this in a bit. It's like a configuration um, class, which kind of just holds configuration. So it loads a config file and then does all this stuff. And then you have this, you know, get atra, um, which resolves a key from the environment variables. And you have get item, which does the same thing. So this allows you to say, you know, ethan.programmer, for example, if programmer wasn't something that was set up here, you know, maybe you could look it up in a dictionary um, or something like that. So yeah, that's basically all the ones that I wanted to talk about. There are so many others out there, um, and a lot of them are quite useful, but this video is already getting pretty long. It's longer than I thought it was going to be. Um, I'm glad I kind of limited it to what I did. Um, but yeah, if you found it helpful at any point, then do consider leaving a like to let me know, and maybe subscribing if you want to see more videos like this. If there's anything particular you want me to cover, then make sure to leave a comment. I do read them all, so the feedback would be greatly appreciated. If you want to support the channel monetarily, you can do so in one of two ways. The first, by becoming a member by using the join button below. The second, by becoming a patron by using the link in the description. One pound on either, and you can be on this screen like these people. And I will see you in the next video, where I will finish a video that I've kind of been working on before everything became really busy and I didn't have time so I did this one instead but that video should be really good if you're looking you know hardcore into the Python 3.12 changes specifically the multi-parallelism stuff that video would be really good so make sure to watch that uh, so I will see you then I guess